Good morning and welcome to this devotion. I am grateful to Virginia Mora for covering the devotions the last few weeks while I was traveling and spending time with our children who were visiting from Scotland and glad to be back. Today I'm doing the last chapter reflection from the book Prayer, Finding the Heart's True Home, and the title of the chapter is Radical Prayer. It is the last chapter, and it really is an invitation, a challenge, a call to fully praying, to giving our, our entire souls, our entire lives, our entire being, our entire life, you know, moving forward, everything that our lives are going to be about to God and prayer. <clears throat> to call it radical is to just be honest about what it means. And how radical it feels depends on what it is God has for you to do and where you live at the moment. There are people who are being martyred for their faith in our world today. The early church faced off with martyrdom and being ostracized by family and by their synagogue or their religious tradition if they weren't Jewish because they were entering into a relationship with a Lord and a Christ that moved beyond what their religion and their family may have believed to be true or wanted to you know, keep everybody within the control of the family or the religion. And so when we look at Jesus Christ, and I'm particularly looking at Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Matthew, in my reflections, we see that Jesus Christ was facing off with his own battle with radical prayer. He didn't say, come to prayer and give yourself fully to God, and it'll be a nice, easy tr transition between the life before you give your life to God and the life after you give your life to God. It was actually very hard. In Matthew chapter 9, he, he says, you know, you don't, when you're sewing, you don't sew a new piece of cloth onto an old piece of cloth um, because it, the new cloth will shrink and it'll tear the fabric. And he says, you don't put new wine in old wine skins because the wine skins will burst. And he's being very clear with his disciples and being very clear even with himself that this kingdom of God that he came to demonstrate and to preach was so radical that if you, if you think you can do it inside of the Jewish religion as it exists or inside of the Roman Empire as it exists, that's like putting new wine in old wine skins or putting new and old fabric together. It just will not work. And then if you go to the end of his life in Matthew 26, when he goes into the Garden of Gethsemane, <clears throat> he takes his disciples and then takes three disciples further on into the garden and he lets them participate in his agony as he faces off with radical prayer, he prays, if there's any other way that I can be who I need to be for you, Lord, that I can do what I've been given to do other than go through what I see coming, which was an arrest and a crucifixion, I would, I wish for that. But nevertheless, your will be done. He prays that. He finds his disciples sleeping and he gets angry. Can't you see I'm really in the turmoil here, he says, and you can't even spend an hour praying with me? He was doing radical prayer, and they were avoiding radical prayer. And it says he did that three times. He did it three times, not just one time, but three times. And I would suggest and believe that he had been doing it many times. Over and over and over again, he knew he couldn't sew new and old fabric together or put new wine in old wineskins. He knew that what he was in instigating, what he was announcing, what he was demonstrating and beginning was a very radical shift in how God was known and experienced and how the spirit of God would work in the world. And so as he faced off with the question, would he be faithful, he was doing what I believe is the most radical prayer. 
the most radical prayer is um, a few things. One, will I really pray? Will I honestly go and seek God? Will I honestly talk to God and listen to God? Will I slow down and be silent enough to let the Spirit of God say what I can't hear unless I'm silent for a while? Will I really seek the will of God? The second thing is, will I pray to become Christ? Will I be Christian? Will I be a little Christ? Will I pray that I will be in the version that is true to myself and who God made me to be? Will I be my version of the Christ, of Jesus Christ? Will I really pray for that? And will the standard I have and my own reflections on my life each day be how am I doing in being and living as the Christ, which means the status of being a child of God and loved and filled with the spirit of God and all the blessings of being a full child of God. But it's also the, the mandate, the, the calling to live differently than the powers and, and uh, demonic forces, the evil forces, the toxic forces in the world. And so, this radical prayer asks, will we become like Christ? It also is asking, will we then create a Christian community? Will we be together in the ways that Christ said to be together? Will we love one another the way Christ said to love one another? Will we invite in all the foreigners and the people who are outside and, and go from being um, a religion that's just for Hebrew people to being a spiritual movement that's for everyone? Will we build a community? Will we depend on each other? Will we do the things this, the New Testament tells us to do? Love one another, pray for one another, encourage one another, forgive one another, confess sins to one another. Do the one another search in Bible Gateway. Just do one another and do the search. And the question would be, are we going to pray the radical prayer of, of being in harmony with being a Christian community? a community that is shaped by Christ, who Christ is and how Christ works. And ultimately the radical prayer is, will you do what Jesus did in the garden? Will you and I, will we pray however many times we need to pray, however deeply we need to move into the garden, into our place of prayer and we take our friends with us. But if they're not going to go where we need to go, we go there anyway and give ourselves to what God has for us. I think radical prayer can sound like something way out there and unreachable and feed into our too often in intention or tendency to believe we're unworthy. And in prayer, there's no unworthiness in terms of the invitation to pray because the fact of our being means God loves us. So being worthy isn't, will God love you or not love you? Being worthy is, will you fall asleep and refuse to seek God? Or will you keep seeking God and be transformed by the spirit of God? And so being worthy is just like, you can be on the, be on the team, but to be worthy to be on the team, you have to join the team. And then you have to show up for practice. And then you have to learn your position, then you have to wear the uniform and show up for the games. And too many people believe they're on the team because they're sitting in the stands applauding the work of God. What radical prayer says is, I want to be the work of God. I want to be the radical transformation of God in the world. Let it begin and work through me. Begin with me and work through me. And that's what Jesus surrendered to in the Garden of Gethsemane, that's what brought him to the cross, and that's what we're invited to share in. I'm crucified with Christ, Paul said. Nevertheless, I live. The life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And that is the pattern of our lives as well. That we will pray the radical prayer. That we will genuinely seek to become Christ in the world, to build Christian community, and to be faithful to what we're shown as we pray those prayers that are radical. <clears throat> if it scares you, if it seems difficult, then you may be on track to what it really means. 
if you're feeling like you can't accomplish it, if you think it's not something that God will do in your life, then you are being deceived. Because Christ's faithfulness in the cross led to the resurrection. Those same disciples that went to sleep began to pray radical prayers when the Spirit filled them, and they changed their lives and they changed their world. If we don't think God can indwell the radical prayers of his people and do the radical work that we find ourselves seeing and being called to in prayer, then we are deceived. So the radical prayer I'm hoping for, for myself, for us, for each of you, is that you'll know the full blessings of being a, a beloved child of God and having the fullness of God's spirit and God's love in you. And that you will then live a life in harmony with that. And in our world, that's radical. To know you're loved and not be condemned and to become a life of love that's like the life of Christ is radical. But it's full of joy. It has eternal rewards. And it will make our world more of what we pray each week when we pray the Lord's Prayer. That God's will would be done on earth as it is in the place where God dwells all the time fully. That heaven. So I wish for you and for all of us radical prayer because it's there in radical prayer that God gets what God wants. May it be so to the glory of God. Amen.